The Rummy Nose Tetra is a great fish, but it does have some challenges. Let's talk about why. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Yes, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Rummy Nose Tetra. It's a common yet very beautiful fish, something you should consider. Let's talk about why. So this tank that you're looking at, it is not mine. This was done at Aquashella Chicago. It was the aquascaping contest done by Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics. His crew, unfortunately, he wasn't there. Brooklyn Bell was there. Uh, this is a fantastic tank, and they highlighted some amazing rummy nose tetras. And as soon as I saw these, I thought, wow, we need to talk about these fish because it's rare that you see them this large. It's hard to really gauge how big they were because this is almost a 75 gallon aquarium, and these fish were every bit the two and a quarter to two and a half inches, the max size that these rummy nose can get. Rummy nose tetras are awesome. They show fantastic color. They've got that silvery body with that real nice red head and the white and black striped tails. This is a great fish that's from Brazil and Peru. Now the water there is on the softer side with the pH that's on the lower side, something that we'll talk about a little bit more when we get into water parameters. Like I said, size, max size, about two and a half inches or so. The thing is when we usually see them at the pet store, they're lucky to be an inch or so. So it was really cool, like I said, seeing these on a larger size. Lifespan, now this is an interesting fish in that I think we need to talk a little bit about their overall health. They can get to be five, six, seven years old. I've had them in our fish room get to be that old. We're gonna talk about why sometimes maybe they don't get that old in your aquarium. By the way, if you're looking for these fish, you can't find them locally, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. They are a channel sponsor. They have nice, healthy, happy, rummy nose tetras. And I was actually spending some time talking with Rob at Flip Aquatics as to why that is and how they acclimate the fish when they get them in. So check out Flip Aquatics if you're looking for these fish. Now, there's a lot of different tank mates that you could potentially have with your rummy nose tetras. So for instance, you could certainly have other types of smaller tetras like your neons and your cardinal tetras. Ember tetras would be really cool as well as your gold tetras. You could also consider some of your rasboras, like your brilliant green, your green kubatai, galaxy rasboras. Maybe you could mix in some cherry barbs with these fish. If you're looking for more of like a centerpiece fish, how about a honey garami? Even the pearl garamis would make a really nice combination. Peacock gudgeons would add a little bit of color. If you want some cichlids, you could certainly consider your epistogramma your rams, lots of different varieties, crebenzis. If you're looking for something that's gonna be more of a scavenger cleanup crew, you've got all your different types of quarry cats and plecos from your bristlenose up to your snowball and zebra plecos. They will most likely get along fine with snails. Shrimp, they're probably gonna eat the shrimp babies and, and so that's something you're gonna wanna consider. If you're trying to keep these with bettas, make sure that your rummy nose are well fed to cut down on the likelihood of them fin nipping your bettas. Obviously, the number one thing is you want to keep these fish in a group, minimum of six, but the more you can do, the better off you're going to be. Eight, 10, 12 is going to be a much more striking look than if you're keeping the bare minimum of five or six. These are peaceful fish, and I think that's what attracts a lot of beginners to the rummy nose tetra is you keep them in a group they pretty much stick to themselves and they mostly leave other fish alone now with the water parameters you do have to be a little bit careful here and i kind of alluded earlier that sometimes this fish can be a little bit of a challenge and that really has to do partially with water parameters Generally speaking, they're gonna like softer water somewhere around three to eight, maximum about 10 degrees water hardness on your GH and KH. pH ideally would be somewhere in the low sixes to maybe just above seven. If you start going too far above that, they start to get a little bit more challenging to keep. We've tried to keep them at our pH of around eight to 8.2 and our GH and KH around a 10. They don't really like that. And so we generally don't keep them in our fish room very often. So it's just something to keep in mind. Also, this is a fish. Of all the fish I've ever dealt with, this is a fish that if they get ick or they get some type of external or internal parasite, they really don't do well. Some of the most aggressive ick infestations and infections I've ever had we're with rummy nose tetras where one minute they look okay, next minute I see a couple spots, and by the next day they are covered in ick. 
What that means for us as fish keepers is the closer we can get to their ideal water parameters, the better. Also, we really want to make sure that our fish tanks are fully cycled. If you don't know what that means, please check out that video in the upper right hand corner. I've put it in the description below as well. It is one of the things that is absolutely critical for our understanding as fish keepers is making sure that there is no ammonia and no nitrite in our fish tanks because if that happens with these fish, it really leaves them open to potential for disease. Feeding these fish is really easy. We feed all of our fish north fin flakes and micro pellets. They pretty much will take to any, pretty much any prepared foods. Uh, they can do frozen blood worms. If you chop them up, it makes it a little bit easier. Frozen brine shrimp is nice. The tank size for these fish, again, often when we see them in a pet store, they're right around an inch or so. So it seems like they would go in a 10 gallon okay. That's really, really stretching the lower limits. I would prefer to see them in at least a 20 gallon, really because, you, again, you want to keep these fish 8, 10, 12 at least. And when you keep them in a group like that, if you've got a 20 gallon, that's going to give them a little bit more space. Now, setting up your tank, there are some things to consider. I'm showing you a couple of really cool aquascapes from Aquashella and both of them are amazing setups and both of them would really lend well to a rummy nose tetris setup now you don't have to be this elaborate not by a long shot uh, substrate is not going to matter whether it's sand or gravel they don't interact with the substrate so make your substrate decision based on the other fish that you are keeping plants either fake or real that would help them feel more secure you see some rock work some wood uh, if you've got some plastic decorations in your tank that's great just make sure you give them some open swimming space this is a fish that would appreciate the ability to swim from one end of the tank to the other unobstructed and so that would be something to consider as well one really important thing if you keep this fish on darker substrate with a darker background they're actually going to show more red and that silver is going to be a little bit darker as well so this is a fish that if you give them a darker a darker environment they're actually going to show more color even more so than you see throughout this video so decorating the tank is not going to be all that cumbersome or all that difficult to do if you want to breed these fish you're going to have to get very close to the ideal water parameters uh, again, softer water, usually in the low to mid single digits on your GH and KH. Your pH is probably going to be sub seven, if not closer to six and a half. They can actually go warmer. So the water temperatures for these fish, somewhere around 75, 76, all the way up to 82, 83 degrees. If you want them to breed, you're going to have to be in the low 80s, most likely to maximize your success. They don't lay as many eggs as some of the other fish their size. Definitely a good idea to remove the adults after the males have fertilized the eggs to cut down on the likelihood that the adults are going to eat the fry. These are absolutely fantastic fish. As you can see throughout the video, lots of nice color, great personality, peaceful. As long as you've got that 20 gallon or larger tank and you've got water parameters that are a little bit on the, you know, close to neutral, maybe slightly acidic, softer water, this is a great fish to consider. If you want more information on tank mates, again, check out the description below. We've got all kinds of videos for you. Again, check out flipaquatics.com if you're interested in purchasing these fish. Really appreciate beer, and we'll see you in the next one.